Hey crafters, Lisa from Fun Subs Crafts. So glad you could join me again today. I've got a really fun project for us to work on today. Journals are so popular. You see so many people um, journaling for a number of reasons or just a basic notebook being able to um, jazz it up a little bit. Um, these journals that I'm going to be showing you today, I actually use one at work every day for note taking. I also use one with my blog with craft ideas and um, different blog ideas. I also mentioned in my trailer um, accessory blog that I made one to journal as we go around in our trailer. So here is a few examples of um, some of the journals that um, we are going to be looking at today and I'm going to show you um, how to make them. In fact, this one right here is the one that we're going to be making um, in the tutorial. It says best day ever. One of my thoughts also was what about those brides to be? you know, um, getting ready for their wedding, why not make them a cute little journal um, to give them as a shower gift or once they um, first get engaged to keep track of um, all the big events leading up to the day or any special event. Um, so these are fun. I made these for craft bazaars um, and they were a big hit. They're super inexpensive to make. And so why don't you just give me a second to get my camera adjusted and we will get making. Let's get started on this project. Here are three examples of journals I've made from composition notebooks. The first one, I use Simple Joy cardstock. The next one here, I use Perry and Peach. And then the last one, I used Peaceful Meadows. So these are all cardstock packs that I picked up at either Hobby Lobby or Joann's. So for each one of these, I have put in a inside pocket on both the front and the back, and I've used two pieces of cardstock, two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock. And you can see that I have used um, contrasting paper on the front and the back, and then I've also used the contrasting paper to make the pockets on each one of these journals. So lots of fun to do um, and very easy to do. So what we do is we are going to start out with a composition notebook and I'm going to show you here on what my materials are. So I've got my pad of cardstock paper. Orchard Hill is the one that I'm going to use for this project. I've also got my cardstock paper, a tag, some double-sided tape, my Cricut, a Exacto knife, a ruler, and my self-healing mat. So here I'm showing you my double-sided tape that I like to use, and I'll put the links down below. But for that pro this project, I use one inch and two inch. This is my We Are Memory Makers corner chopper that I used, and my Cricut um, X-Acto knife, my Cricut ruler, And then this is my 88 cent composition notebook that I picked up at Walmart. And then here I show you I'm using the Orchard Hill paper collection and just lots of different choices of designs inside of this um, package of cardstock paper. And then I chose two different um, pieces from it. Now, I picked these up on a hot buy at Michael's. I always try to pick up my cardstock paper when it's like buy one, get one free. So I thought these were two really pretty colors. And then I always like to look for the tags inside the cardstock paper too. So that's going to go on the front of our composition notebook or our journal. So the next thing we're going to do here is we are going to start on the project. And this is a pretty simple project and it's lots of fun and it's easy to do. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to measure our composition notebook. Now most of the notebooks are a standard nine and three quarters by seven and a half, but I always measure to make sure. And what we're looking for is the height of the notebook. So nine and three quarters is my height and I am going to cut at 10 inches here. So I always like to look at what way I want my design to go on my paper. And then I cut both of my pieces of paper at the same time. And this is where my ruler and my X-Acto knife come in. As you can see, I'm using my self-healing mat. So it is great for measuring. 
and then I've got both my pieces of paper down using my X-Acto knife to trim off. And so I am left with 10 inches um, there. And then those pieces that I just cut off, I'm actually going to use as my pockets for the project. So I always cut at 10 inches to give a little bit of extra room um, on the project. Now I'm going to take my double-sided tape and I like the, um, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I like the Soup Wong um, double-sided tape. I've just found like that it, it adheres very well. So we are going to cover the front cover. The very first thing you want to do is put a piece of tape as close to that binding as possible, and then also right there on the edges. Now for these journals, the edges is the key. You want to get it really close to the edge because that is where your paper can get pulled the easiest on the journals. I've seen people use Mod Podge for these type of journals and I've seen people use glue. I just like this double-sided tape um, the best. So I take the one inch tape and I go all the way around, as you can see, and then I use the two inch tape to put it in the middle. Now you could very easily continue to use the one inch tape, just the two inch tape covers more area. So that's why I choose to um, use that two inch tape here in the middle. So I'm gonna add the tape in here. And then once it's on, I'm actually going to um, use my X-Acto knife and remove it. Now I've noticed that I've got one corner that's not quite covered so I'm going to use a little bit of my half inch tape and just make sure that that cover gets cornered, covered. Excuse me. So I'm removing that top layer of the tape and so now my cover of my journal is very sticky. So you want to be careful the stuff you have around it that um, stuff will definitely stick to it quite easily. So I've got that one piece of tape on my finger that I am going to make sure I take care of that corner because you want your corners adhered very, very well. If you get this taken care of, then what we'll do is we're going to put our front cover on. So remember we measured that at 10 inches. So the 10 inch spot that we measured or the, the side that we you're going to carefully place it and line it up and see how I've got just one side lifted up. I'm lining that up with the binding and then I am going to um, use my scraper and I'm really going to burnish that to the cover. Really making sure that that tape is adhered very well. I find that if you do this, the chances of your um, cover coming off are very slim. And then what I'm doing is I'm scoring right where that um, piece is going to fold in. Now some people will do a separate sheet for the inside. I like this folded over technique. I think it gives a really nice finished look to the journal. And so now our next step is we're going to start adding our double sided tape to finish off the inside cover. The first thing I like to do is put it on the outside piece of the cardstock. And so we're going to put one piece there because it's hard to measure where your paper is going to land. I just find it's easier to put it on the paper there. And then one right inside on the inside cover. That way when you fold it over it adheres really nice. And then basically you're going to just follow the same thing you did with the front and you're going to go all the way around on your cardstock paper and you are going to put your double-sided tape and then once we get it all the way around we are going to take some of our two inch tape and I'm just going to put one strip on the inside cover. The outside I definitely put the two pieces on but the inside doesn't get as much wear and tear. You can definitely put two pieces here if you would like. Now I'm going to remove that top layer of the tape and again very sticky so let's just make sure that anything we've got laying around there that we um, 
don't accidentally let anything fall on it because it will stick. This is really, really nice tape. So as I get that all removed there, I'm going to very carefully now, remember how we um, folded that already. It makes it so much easier to fold in. And then I just work my way out and I'm going to burnish it really, really good again. Just making sure it's stuck. You can do it with your hand, but I really like using my scraping tool to get this piece done. So I'm just working that very carefully. Now, remember how we left a little bit of extra. You could cut it exact if you want, but I just think this has more of a finished edge. So I use my Cricut ruler, my Cricut self-healing mat, and my X-Acto knife, and I am just trimming it, pressing very hard here and trimming it off. And it just, instead of trying to measure up and get your paper exact, this is how we can have a really nice finished edge. So I'm going to do that both on the top and the bottom of the front cover and it just looks really really nice it's a nice straight edge now there at the corner what i'm doing is i'm filling with my fingernail just where the edge of it is because it's really hard to see and so that is why i kind of feel that and then just using my ruler and the exacto knife and i'm just cutting that right off and then you can see we have a really nice front cover for it so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the inside pocket on. Now I use a contrasting piece. It just pulls the front and the back cover together. So I'm just seeing how that's going to be placed up and, and how that looks here. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this piece at 10 inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut both of them just like I did with the cover and measure that up using my mat there. Now, if you have a, you know, um, another type of ruler you can use, another type of mat, these are just tools that I have that I just love to use. So I'm gonna cut that off. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to use the half inch tape, which is my thinner tape, and we are going to put it on three sides. Of course, you don't want to put it on all four sides because this is a pocket and we want to be able to use the pocket. Now, if you've got a tape runner, you can definitely use your tape runner here. You don't necessarily have to have the three sizes of um, uh, double-sided tape like I have. So use what you have, although I will put the links. I use this tape all the time and I just really like it. I also like to make boxes and this is great tape to use um, to make boxes also. So I'm going to remove my the three sides of the tape and then making sure you're placing this appropriately the the open end goes to the you know the inside so it will actually be a pocket measure it up and then I'm going to place that pocket in there and then I'm going to trim just like I trimmed with the other piece. Now you could have trimmed this all at once I just find trimming it as I go um, works out really nice. So it's exactly how you guys want to do it. I'm just trying to give you ideas on how I um, make my journals. So now we've got the front cover. Um, and it is pretty well done. And so we are going to move to the back cover. And I'm going to fast forward through this section because this section is exactly the same as what we did on the front. I'm going to tape it, I'm going to place my paper, and we're going to do the pocket. So as you watch me fast forward through this, you know some of the really fun ways to use the journals, um, I use mine at work every day. Um, I use mine with my blogging. I'm keeping track of classes I'm teaching or blog ideas. Um, I was thinking even for, you know, uh, a bride-to-be um, to keep a list of things. So just all different ways that you can use these journals. People just like to journal. I, as I said in a blog earlier um, this year, I made one for our camper, and I'm using it to do all of our um, camping journeys. So now that I've got the front and the back on, I love my We Are Memories um, corner chopper. I use this all the time. And I am just 
clipping off the corners. This has got a quarter inch and a half inch corner clip. Um, and it just gives it a nice finished look. So I am just clipping off the corners there. And then we are going to get ready and put that little tag on. Now, most all of the cardstock packs that you buy anymore come with little sayings or little tags in them. You can even buy cardstock packs that are just tags. And I love using the positive reinforcement um, on these type of journals. So this one um, is kind of a little hard to see because it's got a gold foil, but it says best day ever. So again, I'm just applying a little bit of the um, double-sided tape here, and I am going to remove the tape cover there, and then I'm going to place this right on the front cover, and you have just cre um, created a trendy journal. I've sold these at craft bazaars. As I said before, I use mine every day um, for work. And again, here are some of those examples of the ones that I had already made. So I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on making these trendy journals. I'm so glad you joined me back here at Fun Stuff Crafts. If you liked what you saw today, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, click on the like button and please leave me comments. Let me know what you think about this. And if you click on the alert button each time I post a new video, you will be alerted. So once again, I hope I inspired you here at Fun Stuff Crafts. Until next time.